Welcome back everyone. We're gonna be going over the digestive system this week. Just a reminder, this is the last lecture of content that you guys are going to need to know. Next week will be review week and then the following week will be your practical. So it's just these two sections for this practical. So don't forget that. We're gonna start at the oral cavity where we begin our food intake. Starting off, we have the tongue. Hopefully everyone knows what that is. Mastication is just to chew, and you can see there's a few other definitions you guys are going to need to know on the first page of this section. You have your teeth. There's a lot of specifics you guys are gonna to need to know with the teeth. We have beautiful board models, and the pictures that you guys have in your PowerPoint are very, very close to what we have in the lab, so we're gonna skip that for today. You have a hard and soft palate. You can see the hard palate right here on the top of the mouth, and where it kind of looks like it changes into more of like a fleshy sort of thing and that's gonna be the soft palate. If you've ever felt the roof of your mouth, you know that it's a pretty hard structure versus if you continue tracing back with your finger, you can start to see where it softens up. I don't know if I'd recommend doing this, you might gag, but just to kind of give you guys an idea, your palate is hard and then eventually softens up. Lots of people don't really know that. And then you have your uvula all the way in the back and that's that uh, <clears throat> little dangly thing that is in the back of your throat. <coughs> now we're gonna talk about some of these salivary glands. Starting off, we have the parotid salivary gland. That's this giant orange <coughs> structure back here. So that's the parotid salivary gland. And then the parotid duct is that little green line. Next up, you have your submandibular salivary gland. Your submandibular duct is that little green line right there. And then you have your sublingual salivary gland. So sublingual is, just means under the tongue. Uh, so if you've ever like taken like medicines that say like, oh, place this underneath your tongue, that's a sublingual medicine. So that's usually helped me remember the sublingual salivary gland versus submandibular. And then you have your palatine tonsils, which are <coughs> back on this model, kind of the tonsils that we learned about a while ago. Like I said, we're gonna be skipping a lot of the teeth stuff. That's all pretty easy stuff and our boards and pictures in our uh, PowerPoints look very good, so definitely just check that out. Uh, the anatomy of the pharynx is the same. The nasopharynx, oropharynx, and laryngopharynx are all tested as regions, and then you have your esophagus and the lower esophageal sphincter, which you can almost kinda see on top of the stomach. So there's a sphincter at the very end of your esophagus that allows a certain pace of food to enter your stomach at a time. Now we're gonna talk about the stomach. First up, we have the lesser curvature. That's just this curvature right here. The greater curvature is on the outside. So all this on the outside. <clears throat> Next up, we have the fundus of the stomach. That's kind of just this top corner of the stomach. That's how we indicate that. Just below the lower esophageal sphincter, we have the cardia of the stomach. You do need to write of stomach for all of these terms. We have the body of the stomach. That's just all this, the rest of it, and the pylorus here at the very end. So this is the pylorus of the stomach, and you have your pyloric sphincter, which you can kind of see if you rotate this, that sphincter right here allows control of the rate of food being able to flow from your stomach into your duodenum. <clears throat> One other term <clears throat> is rugae of the stomach. Rugae of the stomach is just gonna be all these folds on the inside, all those ridges. You do need to write rugae of stomach. You guys will learn other rugae's eventually, such as like your urinary bladder. A couple other quick things I wanna talk about is some of the muscle layers that you can be tested on on the stomach on this model. So, first off, we have the longitudinal muscle layer. That's gonna be this muscle layer going around the entire outside portion of the stomach. We have the circular muscle layer right here, kind of just going in a circle around the stomach. And then we have the oblique muscle layer. That's gonna be all this darker red stuff. So oblique muscle layer, longitudinal muscle layer, circular muscle layer. You guys can also learn that on uh, your villi models or your gastric models, so just make sure you're aware of that. Next up is just the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. 
uh, going from top to bottom in your guys' lab book, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, the duodenum is the one that is blue, jejunum is purple, and ileum is orange. So there should be a picture just above that section, and I can give you an idea of that. Just like we have rugae of the stomach, we also kind of have like a similar rugae sort of thing in the intestines, and that's going to be the plicae circularis. And I definitely recommend checking that out on the cadavers. Uh, that structure looks super cool. And you can see those ridges on the inside of the intestine very easily. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the villi models. Everyone's least favorite portion of this lab, almost always most missed. In the, your lab book, you can see this one looks very similar to that one picture. This is an intestinal villi. There's also a gastric villi. That one is picture only, and it looks almost exactly like that picture in your lab manual, so use that for a little help. Just a couple quick notes. We're gonna be talking about structures that these villi have in common. So you can see there's like a general list of things that they share, and then there's a stomach specific and an intestine specific section, so just make sure you know that. Starting off, we have mucosa. Everything from the top of the villi down here to our first muscular layer, that layer is going to be the mucosa. Next up is going to be the submucosa, which is this pink fleshy bit right here. Then the muscularis externa, which is this red stuff. And then down here at the very bottom is our serosa. To give you guys an idea, the villi up here face the inside of your digestive cavity. So when you're in your intestines, food is kind of traveling like along these villi. So this is the closer to the lumen of your intestine, this is closer to the outside of your intestines. So mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, serosa at the very bottom. Talking a few specific things about the mucosa, we have the mucosal epithelium. That's just all these cells going around your villi, all that cell layer, tissue layer, all that good stuff. Your mucosal epithelium is replaced constantly. You have to think like so a lot of the stuff that travels in our digestive tract is really acidic or basic. There's a lot going on there, so this epithelium needs to be replaced constantly. Inside that epithelium, inside that tissue type, we have all these individual cells. You can see they have little blue dots in them. Those are gonna be goblet cells. So the way I often test my students is if I say name this structure, I'm talking about an intestinal villi. If I say name this tissue type, it's a mucosal epithelium, or if I say like name this cell type and I point to just one of those, it's a goblet cell or a mucus cell. Lamina propria, you can see pretty easily right here, labeled as number eight. In my lab book, I don't know if this helps, I just wrote like anything that there really is nothing. So you can see there's a lot going on in this model, but there's like certain patches where there's not really any structures, it just looks like part of the plain model, and that is lamina propria. Next, we have muscularis mucosa, that is this strip of muscle right here. So this is the muscularis mucosa, it is part of the mucosa. And then we have an intestinal crypt. If you guys can see it right here, there's kind of like this little section where you can see like an opening and then like a little tiny, almost vile looking structure. That is the intestinal crypt. And then we have our circular and longitudinal muscle layers. <clears throat> we have our circular muscle layer, longitudinal muscle layer. You can also see those on the stomach. Again, this is for an intestinal villi, so <clears throat> it's a little different for the stomach, so just make sure you're aware of that. And then the last couple that we're gonna go over that are intestine specific, are intestinal villi, we just talked about. It's all these structures up here. We have lacteal, which is all that white stuff in here. You guys will learn about that eventually. You'll learn about like the chylomicrons and all that stuff and how that plays into it. And then a capillary network. So hopefully you guys know what a capillary is from your last section. So again, this is just for an intestinal villi. There are lots of similarities such as like the serosa, the mucosa, all that good stuff. But make sure you take a lot of time and think about the difference between this one and the gastric model, which again is gonna be tested as picture only. Next up would be the anatomy of the large intestine, but we're gonna let you guys do a lot of that. It's 
the pictures that we have in the PowerPoint are almost exactly like our model, so hopefully it's pretty easy for you guys to figure out. Only thing I want to mention really specific, or quickly specifically is that each of those individual lobes all throughout your large intestine are called haustra. So you can see they kind of look like little bulbous-like structures. That's going to be your haustra. And then that <coughs> line of muscle going around the entire large intestine is going to be your tania coli. Everything else is pretty easy. Ascending colon goes up, transverse colon goes to the side, descending colon goes down, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Next up, we're going to talk about the anatomy of the liver and gallbladder. You have four lobes of your liver. You have your right lobe, your left lobe, <clears throat> your caudate lobe right here, and then your quadrate lobe, which is down here next to the gallbladder. So this is the quadrate lobe. My TA helped, he told us that he remembered the quadrate lobe because it was next to the gallbladder and it made him think of GQ, like GQ magazine. I think that's stupid. I don't know if that helps you, but it kind of helped me remember it, I guess. So you can do what you want with that. This is the quadrate lobe right here. You do need to know some of the vasculature again. So uh, last section was circulatory system. We're not going to just throw that stuff out. We do need to know some of that stuff still. So for example, these blue structures are your hepatic veins. The purple ones are your hepatic portal vein. Remember, portal, purple. You have your proper hepatic artery in here, and your common hepatic artery is part of that celiac trunk. So go ahead and take a minute when you're in lab, look at those two ligaments that I skipped over, and now we're going to talk about the gallbladder. So we have our gallbladder right here. We have our cystic duct right here, kind of the top of the gallbladder. We have our common hepatic duct over here to the side of the gallbladder. And then where the two meet is going to be our common bile duct. So right here where the two meet, common bile. Your peritoneum, that picture we have in your PowerPoint is really awesome. Definitely just check that out. It's super duper helpful. <clears throat> Next up we have the pancreas. <clears throat> Starting off we have our pancreatic duct, which is all this and dives down. We have our accessory pancreatic duct on top. And then on the inside where you can see there's like little openings where it enters into the duodenum is gonna be our duodenal papilla. Kind of hard to see on the video, way easier to see in person. And then again, you guys do need to know the hepatic portal system. So just make sure you take a minute to review that and you can see some of that in my last video if you are really looking for a lot of extra help. That's going to conclude this video for today. Remember, you only have these two sections on your practical, so take lots of time to go over this material because next week is already review week and your practical will be the week after. So spend some time, look at the cadavers, look at the models, look at the cats, all that good stuff. And we will see you guys in a couple weeks when we begin the urinary system.